God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for one more day, oh God, that you've blessed us with to praise your holy name. And Lord, we ask right now, oh God, that you just have your way. Bless right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, as we worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done, how you continue to bless us over and over and over again. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for putting food on our table and clothes on our back. God, we thank you. And God, we ask right now, oh God, that you would just have your way in this place, oh God. Move from heart to heart, from breast to breast. Give us what we stand in need of this day. And God, if there's one that don't know you, that this will be the moment and time. This will be the moment and time that they'll cry out, what must I do to be saved? God, we thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for who you are. You're God and God alone. And we praise your holy name. And we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're about to do, oh God. And yes, oh God, we have great expectation for the future. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you'll go to the book of Genesis, the 22nd chapter. I'm going to read the first 14 verses of that book. Again, that's chapter 22, Genesis, first book in the Bible, and it reads, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering unto one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose early, up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and claved the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said my father and he said here am I my son and he said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering and Abraham said my son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together and they came to the place which God had told him of and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou has not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him, a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. 
as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. I've read the first 14 verses of chapter 22 of the book of Genesis. The ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice. We've been talking about sacrifice. Again, we've been talking about sacrificing. Giving something up to bless somebody else. And we find here in the text a most dramatic point in scripture where we find Abraham. Abraham, who in his older years, in fact, being a hundred years old, was finally blessed with an heir, his son, Isaac. And God has told him here in chapter 22 to go and sacrifice his only son. Can we talk about that for just a moment? Because we're not just talking about him just, just killing his son, which is crazy to think about in itself. How can you kill your own flesh and blood? How can you sacrifice what came out of you, your seed? But it was also, he was, it was about also sacrificing his future and also what God had promised him that he would bless him. See, when we, when we take it that extra step, we understand something. Remember, Isaac was his future was what God had promised him that he would bless and make a great nation out of him. Isaac was that person. Miracle birth. Here God has now told him to render up and sacrifice his only son. Abraham. <laughs> Many of us wouldn't even have given it another thought. There ain't no way in the world. Are you crazy? Here, Abraham shows his great faith. That's why he's mentioned in the Hall of Fame in Hebrews. His name is mentioned there because of his great faith. For faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And we find that in verse 5 as we read verse 5. He says, and Abraham said unto his young man, abide ye here with the ass. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again. Now, remember, God has told him, he said, I'm going to go sacrifice your son. Verse 2, take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering. But you find in verse 5, Abraham has taken that. He says, I put my trust in God. I trust in him. I trust in his word. I trust in the relationship I have with a God that cannot lie. He sits in verse 5 and he says, yeah, and, and as they have prepared to go, they've seen the place and Abraham has seen the place where he's going to go. And make this sacrifice of his son. He tells the young men that had accompanied him, y'all stay here for a moment. <laughs> We're just going to go over there and worship. We're going to worship. We're going to praise God. Because God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Because guess what? Even though God has asked me to make this sacrifice. I know my God. I know his heart. I know he will not leave me nor forsake me. And I know there's a purpose for it. So when he says that last person, make that last statement in verse 5, he says, and we will come again. That's, I know my God. Say, we're going to come again. He said, he said, just me. And come again to you. We will come again. And we'll come again. So again, he's showing his great faith, his faith in his God. And now we find in the text that he's taken everything and, and, and they've prepared it and they've taken the fire and he's asked Isaac to carry the wood and, and he's asked him to go and Isaac asks the question in verse 8. He says, Abraham said, my son, 
God will provide because Abraham, Isaac has asked, hey, we have everything for the sacrifice. We have the wood. We have the fire. Where's the sacrifice, Dad? And Abraham said, guess what? God will provide. God will make a way out of no way. So a lot of things that we think are sacrifices that we got to do so much for, God says, I will make a way for you. I will bless you because you've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. You've never seen it. God has supplied your every need. Again, uh, the desire is that not just you be blessed, but that you'll bless somebody else. Here, we find this ultimate sacrifice because no one can even think or fathom about killing their very own flesh and blood. And once there, we find in verse 13 and 14, Starting at, I started verse 12 and says, he said, lay not thine hand upon thy lad. As Abraham has placed him on the altar, preparing to kill him because he wants to be faithful to God, knowing what God had promised him. But see, when we let go and we let God, when we let go and let God have his way, See, the problem is we want to hold on to everything for ourselves, but when we, but the reality, it all belongs to God anyway. We hold on to silly stuff, stuff that we don't even need. We hold on to things that, that don't matter to us at all, really, these financial possessions or things that we have. We hold on to stuff too long anyway, when it could be a blessing to somebody else. And here, we're talking about his own flesh and blood, his son. He's about to put him to death. And God says, no, don't lay a hand on him. Neither do thou anything to him. For now I know that thou fearest God. I know that you love me. Not that you're afraid of me, but that you reverence me. You take me at my word. At my word. I told you to do something, and you did it. You prepared yourself to do the unthinkable, to make the ultimate sacrifice. Ooh. What has God asked you to do? What is God asking you to do that you refuse to do? I ain't doing that. That's too much. Was it too much for Jesus to go to Golgotha's hill and lay down his life for you? Was it too much for Jesus to die and be buried? Was it too much to be persecuted and beaten beyond recognition? Was it too much? And then today we sit back, oh, that's too much. He gave you life and life more abundantly. He gave you a purpose for living. He gave you hope for the future. And you say it's too much to bless somebody else. We got to check ourselves because the reality is that God has called us to make a sacrifice. <laughs> In your time, your talent, and your treasure, God wants you to make a sacrifice. So that you can bless somebody else, whether it's through the church, whether it's in your personal life, whether it's at home, in your neighborhood, your community. God is calling you to be a blessing to somebody else that they may see Jesus and cry out, what must I do to be saved? That's what he's calling you to do. To make a sacrifice. And God here, knowing now, he knows the heart of Abraham. He loves God so much so that he will be willing to make that ultimate sacrifice and kill his only son. And when he lifted up his eyes, he saw God's provision. A ram stuck in the thicket. A ram that was going to be offered as a sacrifice. He says, I, 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 I will provide for you. 
That's why the place is called Jehovah Jireh, God, my provider. He provided the sacrifice that was needed. But God wants to know your heart. What do you love more than him? What have you told him no, he can't have? I serve a jealous God who desires everything because he gave us his best. His name, his name is Jesus. He gave us his best. He gave us his only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And Jesus came and gave his life for you and me. My friend, are you willing to make a sacrifice? To be a blessing to somebody else. Time is drawing nigh. Huh? Huh? I can't let that go. I don't want to do this. That's too much work. That's too much of my resources. That's too much of my time. What if Jesus said things like that? What if that was his thought process? Too much for me to go to Jerusalem. Too much for me to be accused of a crime I did not commit. Too much to be beaten 40 straps, 40 lashes across my back. Too much. Too much to wear that crown of thorns jammed upon my skull. Too much to carry that cross up Golgotha's hill. Too much. Nails in my hands and nails in my feet. Too much to be pierced in my side and blood and water. For too much to be mocked while they cast lots for my raiment. Too much. But no, he, he was that lamb. He was that ram in the thick. He's that lamb that's willing to make the sacrifice for you and for me that we might have right to the tree of life, that we can call heaven our home. My friend, my friend, what are you waiting for? Time is short. And because you still have breath in your body, God still is asking you to make a sacrifice. To be a blessing to somebody else. My message has been for the believer. To encourage and to challenge you. If it's easy, then guess what? <laughs> It don't, this don't supposed to be easy. Nowhere you'll find in the scripture it's going to be easy. It talks about trials and tribulations. It talks about the rough, tough stuff. It don't say nothing about being easy. It's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be a challenge. And we should be willing to make the sacrifice. So that someone, not for you to be praised, and maybe make, let me make that perfectly clear, not for you to be praised or for somebody to slap you on your back and tell you how good you are. So that God will get the glory. I let my light so shine that men may see my good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. That, that they would see Jesus in us. And may make that ultimate decision to make Jesus their choice. My friend, I'm challenging you today. I'm challenging you. What are you willing to give? Christ gave everything. He died. He gave up his life for you and for me. What are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to make a sacrifice, an ultimate sacrifice? So that somebody else can have right to the tree of life.
Again, my message has been for the believer to challenge and to encourage. But I can't take it for granted that everybody knows him. There may be one. There may be one that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. And this is your moment and this is your time to make Jesus your choice. This is it. Now is the time of salvation. And there's two things you must do first. 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 You must recognize your condition that you need a Savior. His name is Jesus. That's first. Secondly, you must believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about with the head knowledge. I'm talking about with the heart. And I'm not talking about this blood pump. I'm talking about the inner man that provokes you to change and gives you a desire to live for Christ forevermore. That's what I'm talking about. Change. If you truly believe it, then Christ said he'll come in. He'll come in and be with you forevermore. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Now, I don't preach no rose petal gospel, so I'm not telling you that everything's going to be easy. I just told you you're going to go through some trials and tribulations. It's called life. It's called life. But his promise is that he will be there with you. And even on those tough days when you look back and you say, how did I make it through? You'll see one set of footprints in the sand. Those were the time my God carried you. That's his promise to us. This is your moment. This is your time. Tomorrow's not promised. If you want to make Jesus your choice. This is your time. I'd love to share with you God's word of how you can be saved today. If you're praying that prayer right now, please let us know at the Brown Grove family. We want to pray with you. We want to share scripture with you. We'll send you to any Bible-believing church because this is not about church membership. This is about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Call us, text us. Let us pray with you. Let us share with you. Let us rejoice. One lost soul that have made the decision to make Jesus their choice. God, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing right now, oh God. Help us. In a world that is so selfish, where mankind has become so selfish, me, myself, and I, that we would truly show the example that Abraham sets before us and offer a sacrifice to the one who gave us life and life more abundantly. God, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. And God, I ask right now, oh God, Mm, if there's one that's praying, oh God, touch right now, oh God. We thank you. We thank you for the change that is coming. Hallelujah. And for all of us, oh God, that we will continue, oh God, to offer a sacrifice. Not only just of praise, but of our time, our talent, and our treasure to you. So that folks can see Jesus and have an opportunity at eternal life. God, I thank you for what you're doing right now. Have your way, oh God. Bless right now, oh God. And we'll be careful, so very careful, to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Because it's due you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. I love you, Brown Grove. I love you, family. I love you, friends. Now go and bless somebody else.
because my Savior, he lives. Hallelujah. 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 My Savior, he lives.